Welcome to your video on percent applications part two. We are still going to be focusing on word problems and using proportions, but these aren't going to follow a specific formula. So you're going to have to do careful reading. Here's our first problem. Dan earns 5% commission on cell phone on each cell phone that he sells. On Tuesday, he sold a $190 cell phone. How much commission did he make on the sale? So our unknown here is just in the question. It says how much commission? So we're going to let X be the commission. And whenever we are solving a problem using a proportion, we want to think about what is our ratio that we're going to be comparing. And so the way that I'm going to think about this one is commission to total. And it will connect back to our percent applications and our percent basics that we've already studied. Because I know that I have 5% commission, and so I know the percent goes over 100. And so the 5 is the commission, but then the total is the 100%. So that follows along. On the other side of the proportion, our unknown is the commission, and so that has to go on top to stay consistent. And then the total would be what the cell phone was, which was 190. Once you have your proportion, we are just going to cross multiply. So we have 100x, and then you would do the 5 times 190. And then you are again going to have that simple one step equation where you're going to divide. And again, we are allowing you a little bit of time here so you can plug this into your calculator. Press pause if you need to. And then you would divide both sides by 100, and x is 9.5. Now, that's not really a good final answer because it says how much commission. Commission is money. That's money that you're going to make. So the actual answer is $9.50. So you might get excited that you found, found x, but make sure you're actually answering the question. All right, number two. The cost of a video game is $29.95. Sales tax is 6%. What is the total cost of the video game? So here, the tax is going to be our un, or the amount of tax is going to be our unknown because that's the extra amount that gets added on to the actual cost. So when we're thinking about our ratio that we're going to set up, we're going to compare the tax to the cost because tax is a fraction or a percent of whatever object you're buying. So when we set up our proportion, we take our percent, which is our 6% sales tax. So the 6 is the tax. And then the cost, it would be 100% of whatever you're buying. So again, it's just 6 over 100. On the other side, we have x on top, because that's representing the tax. And then the cost of the video game, the $29.95, is going to go on the bottom. So at this time, I just I want you to press pause. I want you to solve this proportion, and then you can check your answer with ours. When you set up your equation and cross multiply, and then when you divide, you get x equals 1.797. Now, if you've ever gone shopping, we just deal with pennies, which are to the hundredths. So in figuring out the total cost, that is going to get rounded up. So we're just going to take that as $1.80. So our total cost, and if you've ever gone to a store and looked at your receipt, there's a subtotal line, which is for the merchandise that you purchased. So that would it would get the $29.95. And then there's the tax line, which in this case would be 180. And then the final number on your bill would be the total cost. So it would be $31.75. All right, next problem. Anna and her parents had dinner at their favorite restaurant. The bill was $56 before tax and tip. Her parents tipped their server 20% of the bill. Assuming that tax was 5.6% of the bill, how much did Anna's parents pay for dinner? So we actually have to use two different variables for this problem and set up two different proportions because we have to find two unknowns before we can figure out the total cost. So let's start with the tip. Um, let's let x be the amount of tip. So when we set up our proportion, we're going to take our percent over 100. So we have 20 over 100. And so that 20 was the percent of tip. So then on the top of the other ratio, we need the amount of tip. So the x is going to go on top. 
and then the 100 is the full amount, so the 56 would be the full amount. Okay, I want you to solve this proportion. And when you do, the answer is $11.20. Now, that gives us our first part. So we're obviously going to add the 11.20 to the 56, but we'll hold off on that for now because we do still have to figure out the amount of tax. So let's use a different variable. Let's go with y this time. And let's let y be the amount of tax. And we just did a problem like this, uh, number two. It's just we have a different sales tax rate. And so when we set up our proportion, the percent of the sales tax is 5.6. So that's going to go on top of 100. So we're comparing the tax to the total. So then on top, we're going to have Y, which is the amount of tax over that total bill of 56 again. So here again, I would encourage you to set up your work and solve and then check your answer. So press pause if you need to. When you solve, the answer is $3.14. So then your total you would obviously have the total for your meal, so that was the 56, plus the 11.20 for the tip, plus the $3.14 for the tax. So the total was $70.34. All right, next question. Bath and Body Works has two different coupons available for their customers. The first coupon is for $5 off the total purchase. The second coupon is for 20% off the total purchase. Customers can only apply one coupon. If your purchase is $42, which coupon should you use? And it says use mathematical reasoning to justify your choice. Mathematical reasoning is kind of a fancy way to just say make sure you're showing all of your work. What we don't want you to do is just write down all oh, the second one and then be done with it. You have to make sure that you're justifying it. So let's kind of split up our work. We're going to have to do two different problems a lot like we did on the last one. So let's just think of it in terms of the two coupons. So our first coupon, let's just say we're applying that. It's kind of simple. It's just $5 off. So you take your total minus the five. So our bill would be $37. The second coupon, we're going to have to do a little bit deeper thinking. Um, you can think of it as kind of a percent decrease problem. So our unknown is going to be the amount of the decrease. So how much we're going to take off. And so if you think back to your formula from percent applications part one, the percent decrease formula, it's the percent of decrease. So that would be the 20% over 100 equals the amount of decrease. So that's our X over the original amount, which was 42. So again, you know how to solve these proportions. I'd like you to press pause, cross multiply, divide, and you should come up with 8.4, which again, we know is money. So when we're figuring out, that's how much we're gonna take off of the bill using this coupon. So we're gonna take our $42 minus the $8.40, and we have a total of $33.60. So you can see here, that the second coupon is going to be the better deal. But you can't just say it's always the better deal. You kind of have to be specific because it was just the better deal because we spent $42. If we had spent a different amount, we might have a different answer. So you want to say the second coupon is the better deal if your purchase is $42. And everything that we have shown here is mathematical reasoning. So we've analyzed the two coupons, we've shown our work, we've looked at the comparisons, and then we've actually made a statement. So this is considered a complete answer. Our next problem is what in math is called a two-way table. And so what is shown here are the results of a survey. So people were asked if they like pizza and if they like burgers. And so there were some people that liked both. There were 35 people that liked both pizza and burgers because that's in that upper left-hand box. Um, there were six people that said they don't like pizza and they don't like burgers. So whenever you see a two-way table like this, um, regardless of what the question is asking you, I want you to add another row and column for your totals. So on the, the right here, we're going to add a column for the totals, and we're just going to add across. So you're going to do 35 plus 15, and that gives you a total of 50. 
And then you're going to add across for the people that do not like burgers, and there are 24 plus 6 for a total of 30. And then we're going to add those two numbers and get 80. And then we're going to go down to the left underneath where it says like burgers, do not like burgers. And we're also going to put another row here for total. And so now we're going to add up um, of the people that like pizza. We have 35 plus 24, which is 59. And then for the people that do not like pizza, we have 21. And then if you add a cross, you'll notice that the 15 plus the 21 still equals the 80. So what that tells us is that there were 80 people that were surveyed. And that's an important number. That's our total. So now it says what percent like pizza but do not like burgers? So what you have to identify is which of those four numbers in the table we want to use. So I guess first, you know that the person or the people like pizza. So that means they're in the column where it says like pizza. So you have to decide between the 35 and the 24. But then it says they do not like burgers. And so of those two numbers, we're looking at the 24. So it says what percent? So our unknown is our percent. So we're going to have x representing the percent. And we're going to do x over 100 equals. And so the percent is going to be the like pizza but do not like burgers. And so the number that matches up with that is the 24. That was the actual number of people that like pizza but do not like burgers. And then the 100 represents the total. So on the other side of the proportion, we have to have our total, which is 80. Okay. At this time, you can press pause and go ahead and cross multiply and solve. And when you do, you get x is 30. And so our final answer is 30%. This next question shows another display of data. You may be familiar with this type of diagram. This is called a Venn diagram. And what it shows is basically there were um, two different activities that these California students were asked about. Do they prefer handball or do they pre pre prefer surfing? And so rather than set it up in a table, it's just an event diagram. So let's look at, if you see how the two circles inter, intersect there, and there's that number seven kind of in the middle, that seven means those are the people that like both handball and surfing. And then the 14 that's kind of outside of the circle, that means they don't like either. And then to figure out how many people were surveyed, you just have to add up all of those numbers in each of the different areas of that Venn diagram. And so if you add 4 plus 7 plus 3 plus 14, you get 28 total students. So our first question here says, what percent of the students chose surfing? So we know that we're going to have x representing the percent again. But we have to figure out how many actually chose surfing. And so to get the number that chose surfing, we have to take the three people that are in the one part of the circle, but then we also have to count the seven that were in that overlap. So there are 10 total people that fell in the circle of surfing. So we're comparing the percent that chose surfing to the actual number that chose surfing. We know that our percent, the x, always goes over 100, or the total. And so then on the bottom of the other one, we're going to have the total as well, which is 28. It's just a proportion, so you're going to cross multiply and then divide to solve your equation. And this one's interesting. Um, it's not that nice of a number, which often happens when you're looking at a real survey. It's 35.714. Now, I did say that you should always take the decimals, but this one kind of goes on for a long time. So we're just going to round to the nearest tenth here, and that would be acceptable. So 35.7% chose surfing. The last part of this question says, what percent like handball but not surfing? So when we're looking at all of these numbers, there were 11 total students that liked handball. But seven of those fell in the like both category, so they also liked surfing. So what we're looking for here, the actual number that like handball but not surfing is going to be four. And so when we set up our proportion, we are again 
looking for our percent. So X is going to be our percent. And then we just fill in the proportion like we've been doing. So it's the percent over 100 equals the part over the whole, so the 4 over the 28. And again, when you cross multiply and solve the resulting equation, this one gives us kind of a longer answer, 14.285. So we can just say that it's about 14.3%. And often when you're looking at real data like this, you don't get nice, perfect percents. All right, so you are gonna be looking at a lot of practice problems that have words as their setup. Um, so take time and make sure that you're looking at all of the different pieces that you're given. You can now begin working on your practice.